Good to see you, sir. Great to see you. Got the interlocking N1 on your hat right there. As always. Baseball season has arrived. Yes, it has. That I've, was already, a... I've already watched two games. Have and, you really? And, yes. I mean, that's, that's a sickness. You sit down and I'm, you watch great Fruit League baseball. I'm watching players that I will never see again, other than this at bat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the pitch clock? Uh... I like uh, I, I it you know I tell you why it doesn't matter to me okay <laughs> because I will always, I will tape every game and I can speed through later as much as I love to listen to Michael K and and the guys yeah I can speed through a baseball game in 22 minutes and see every pitch so <sighs> I have my own speed clock no but you know you know <laughs> though I, I've done this sort of stuff before for various events whenever I'm uh, whenever I'm recording something and I'm putting myself on sports blackout so I don't know the the final score and obviously if you have a final score of a grapefruit league game you don't have to worry about it matter. but sometimes you go too fast you go too far and oh, you yeah. see no, something you, no, flash you no, absolutely. for you no I you mean, see that you see the, the shot of the of right. the stands and you mm -hmm. go oh no somebody just hit a home run yeah yeah that's painful okay but so you don't mind the pitch clock at all right now? Um, it's just strange to me. I'm interested. Bizarre. It's strange because it's not a. There's no time in baseball. That's the whole point. Right. A game can last for eternity. It has the potential to never end. Right. Because there's no clock. So to impose a clock on the micro part of the game doesn't make sense. It's not a part me, of the culture. To me, you're you know. But then again, we might be of uh, a different era, Richard. Well, we Two are. Richards who are of a different era. Well, I don't want to confirm that. But <laughs> but to me, the beauty of baseball yeah. is it's not played in a rectangle right. like football, basketball, or in a way, hockey, soccer. It's whacked out, and every different space is different is from different. any other. Right. Unique. That's why there are ground rules right. in each facility. The defense has the ball. There is no clock this is what should be relished by the people who run it and say if you don't like it guess what you can't say well pound sand you suck but it is well it is something that should be relished in a way speaking of being from a different era i used to rate baseball experiences i would cut out of school on a wednesday remember the wednesday matinee double headers sure so up, you would uh, take a train up to the Bronx and one o'clock start and two consecutive games. And I measured that because the Yankees were horrible in the late 60s, right? I had a chance to see Mickey Mantle strike out. And, you know, <laughs> right. But they were horrible. I measured that experience by how long it lasted and how many hot dogs I ate. So if it was a seven-hour day, that was a good day. That's a good day. Yeah, and, uh, uh, to me, it's the pay, it's the style of play, not pace of play. I, I hate the shift. I want the shift out. Everybody tries to hit over it, and that they're just swinging from their heels. They're swinging like no, Jesse I, Barfield I, I, on a bad day every single time that they're up at the Jesse plate. Jesse Barfield. He would always corkscrew himself into the ground, and everybody. So last year there were more foul balls than fair balls hit in Major exactly. League Baseball. Oh, wow. That's, that's a fact. Right. That's amazing. Yes, and so to and more me, more strikeouts than hits. And I am, I am pointing at the shift and saying that's what it is. Exit velocity, wanting to hit it over this shift instead of trying to hit the ball where it's pitched. And yet, and yet this is what I don't get. Because um, the players obviously see the advantage in terms of contractual mm -hmm. negotiations if they have 40 home runs and so on. Right. But every world champion is still the team that hits more doubles, mm -hmm. that can steal a base, that can sacrifice and score one run when the, you need one run. The Red Sox. The Red Sox and Houston before that. Right. And, you know, give me a dozen. That's why we talk about Machado. Give me and Duhar any day as a hitter in a tough situation because he can take the outside slider and poke it down the right field line for a double. That's what I want to see in a close game. I don't want to see um, the guy who's swinging for the fences when we need four runs. You know, I want to see one, two runs at a time, catch up, and put pressure on that defense. Richard Schiff here on the Rich Eisen Show. We were talking uh, about uh, Machado, where he should go. You were hoping he was going to the Yankees, correct? 100%. He's a Red Sox fan. Because yeah, I, this, this is the A-Rod uh, phenomenon. Yeah, totally. Same thing. I, I thought that would be the case, yeah. too. And, you know, it's not because you'd rather see Andujar, which is interesting, by the way. Machado's playing third base. I know. In, in San, San Diego. Diego. Yeah. Really? So, um to me, it's just you look around at the generational talent that the Yankees have and Sanchez and Judge 
and obviously Glaber Torres is going to be one of them. Andujar might be one of them as well. You've got to pay these guys. These guys are going to yeah. have to be paid, and That's I understand right. that there's no salary cap, but at some point teams no. always squawk about the luxury tax, and I know it's not my but Steinbrenner money. but uh, Once you got the core team that the Yankees got in the 90s, and they had that team, that that center of that team with yeah. Jeter and Posada and Pettit and Bernie and all those guys. They only added the veterans that they might need for a stretch run. They never made the big move to get. They got a Tim Raines or they got somebody like that at Boggs, the end of their careers. You know, Boggs. Yeah, Boggs. Charlie which I can't. I mean, yeah. I can't. To this day, what the hell is he doing in a Yankee uniform? Riding a horse. Uh, yeah, winning a championship. Ah. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's Still? just tough for me. Come on. Day, Johnny Damon, too. You had a problem with Clemens? No. <laughs> <laughs> he went to Toronto first. That okay, helped. yeah, so he got yeah. he got the Red Sox stink off him before. And he won two Cy Youngs in Toronto. Right. The Red Sox dumped him, so no. He thought the broken bat was a ball. That yeah. he was throwing at Mike Piazza. I was at that game. So was I. You were? Yeah, I was, covering it for ESPN. I was just sitting there watching it. I was a uh, wild yeah. night. That was crazy. That was a wild, wild night, that Subway series. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it is, it's, it's just an interesting, um, it's an interesting time for baseball. And it, two fans of it, I, I feel kind of bad that we're sitting here bitching about shift and pace of play. Um, but, you know, uh, well, we, we, do, we, you, we still just don't even know where Harper's going yet. Obviously, that's a big you, move. Going back to the shift, do you think it's beho behooved, behoven? Mm -hmm. How do you say that? On the players to 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 learn what George Brett did his entire career and Wade Boggs did his entire career and Tony Jeter Glenn. did his entire career was just to hit the other way every now and then well to me though uh we've had Scott Boris on the program and he says it is biased against left-handed hitters the shift it's always been when you were a kid well the shift lefty. well well the I only mean, shift yeah, right, the lefty right. came up well because you're not able for a righty to put um, four guys on one side of the diamond. You can't get the first baseman. Correct. Right. So lefties, and it's interesting that he was positing this as Bryce Harper was about to hit the open market, um, that that it is, it's biased against them. I don't want to see all these left-handed power hitters bunt. I just don't want to see it. That's not why I go to the baseball. What I go to a baseball game is I love watching how beautiful it is where you do – get singles doubles you do get runners moved over you do see that instead of like well i'm going to play the percentages and i know if i put these seven guys in these positions against a left-handed hitter about 30 you know um now it'll be about 16 percent of the time that this guy actually even reaches first base wow i i just don't want to i just don't i don't i don't know That's i like just... bunting i mickey Mantle used to bunt i like i there, there was some great plays in baseball that we don't see enough of right first of all the fences have been all moved in since it was 461 to Death center Valley. field yeah. and 457 to left center. And you used to see a triples. The triples, to me, is one of the most exciting play. But also scoring from first on a double mm -hmm. and the relay from left to right. short to home. That, to me, is the most exciting play. And the, and the bunt, the suicide squeeze, those are, are – are, are, that's baseball to me. I agree with you. Um, and just off the top of my head, the, the triple – Girardi hit a triple in the 96 yes, World right. Series that plated the winning or the or the last big run because they they really knocked Greg Maddox around in that game six. Uh, also scoring on a, a double from from first base. That's how Griffey came all the way around to score to end Don Mattingly's career. That's right. And then, of course, the famed relay in Oakland, California. <laughs> yeah. Well, Derek that? Jeter yeah, so slapped you, one on uh, yeah. one of the Giambi, Giambi. brothers. Jeremy. Still, you still, still think safe. He, I think he's out. Still safe. Safe. Still safe. Watch based the, on, watch, watch the based replay. on watch wishful thinking? My eyes. Watch the replay. But here's the deal. He imagine leg if, before imagine the plane. if there was a rule in the NBA where and, and people were complaining about Steph Curry. Oh, Steph Curry, shoot the layup. Shoot the layup. Shoot the layup. Be better. Whatever. No one wants to see Steph Curry shoot layups. No one wants I to do. see Bryce Harper bunt down the third baseline. But when Steph Curry penetrates and, and uh, I mean, still, a little guy – going up against three big guys and making the shot is still spectacular. For one for one time. Out no, of a, all out of a two and a half game hour long. game. I want to see Steph Curry shoot threes. I want to see Michael Jordan dunk. But like, Steph that's Curry's why you're going to the games. Steph Curry is the wrong example because his penetration creates 
threes and opportunities for everyone else on his team. And he makes a lot of those shots when he does penetrate. And it's what sets up his three-point shot. Well, this also sets me up for another question for Richard Schiff before we get to your TV work here and your, uh, your other work. Uh, how confident are you? that the Porzingis trade opening up two max contracts for the Knicks this summer Nuts. is a caper that the Knicks are <laughs> set to pull off and 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 get Zion in the draft, even though they've won two in a row now. Great job tanking. And that they... Yeah, that they, they, they don't even know how to lose. They get, they get Zion, and then a little bit of the Dolan uh, magic brings two max contract players together and now suddenly you're a Nick fandom, you go, you're back in the playoffs. How confident are you that they're going to pull this off? Uh, on, a, on a scale of zero to 100? Yeah. I, I'm hoping that my confidence can, can break the positive plane. <laughs> So you're in negative integers? You have yeah, zero. So. I'm going backwards. Um, I, uh, I, I, the Knicks have been great at getting rid of people and getting nothing in return, right? Uh, with Tyson Chandler and that whole era of dumping players that Phil Jackson didn't like. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know what happened behind closed doors with Porzingis, but the prospect of a 7-3 shot blocker who has a three-point shot and who can handle the ball um, uh, was – was the prospect of a savior in New York. And, and just watching the kids develop, knowing he was going to come back, right. was what was keeping me watching all year. Now that he's gone, I like Dennis, uh, D D Dennis Smith Jr. I like, uh, you know, it'd be great to get Kevin Durant, Durant for the last three years of his prime, you know, but I like seeing teams develop. I like watching teams come together. But we're in the era of the super team, though, and, and that, you know, I mean, Mitchell Robinson has been a revelation, obviously. Knox is look a kid that looks really good. I don't know. Knox, is, uh, Knox looks like a, a number nine who might fade. I, 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 I hope he comes through. Okay. There are stretches he looks great. There are stretches he looks kind of out of control. He's got the athleticism, but I, I hope he comes through. Well, our plan, just so you know, here on the Rich Eisen Show that we have hatched, is to get James Dolan out of town <laughs> when free agency opens up, the window opens up July 1st. That he is the he is a liability being in that room when they've got Durant and Kyrie you, Irving and everybody coming in. Are getting you, Are you conjuring a kidnapping? Of no, sure? no, no, no. We're doing this. Well, I'm not going to say fully Potato legal. Sack? It's Potato not fully sack. legal. Mike Del Tufo, uh, uh, a, a fine man from New Jersey. He is our audio executive. He loves music. We are going to create our own Mike Del Tufo Fire Fest. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to have it on an island of Alcides Escobar's. Okay. I, I, I've never um, heard of it, which is a good sign. Okay, right, exactly. Yeah, it's good already. Uh, the, is, what, what, what team is Alcides Escobar on now? He's not a Royal anymore, right? He's moved on. Um, he's okay. on the Orioles now. Um, so anyway, we're going to invite his, uh, James Dolan's schmecky band, JD and the Straight Shot, to I, be the lead. You're going to lure him in. Where he can be the headliner. headliner. Of the Mike Del Tufo, what are we calling it? The Smoke, smoke Fest. Fest. Yeah. What do you think? Anything that can help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. I'm, I'm gonna okay take with, one for the team, Richard. I'm okay with that. Just get him out. Hey, well, if you don't get Zion, who's your number two? Number two. Well, the other kid, right? From uh, yeah. RJ. Yeah, RJ, RJ Barrett. Barrett yeah, right. RJ Barrett. Take any Dookie. And uh, the other one. Well, Cam Reddish. We, what we need to Anybody do. Anybody on Duke? We just can we freeze all the other ping pong balls? Just like apparently That's, David I mean, Stern froze the Pat Ewing envelope. Yeah, I was thinking about that. So all the other ping pong balls stay just, down just and the, only, a, the next one make, pops up. Just make the next ball a golf ball so you can feel it. <laughs> you can feel the texture and the weight. And uh, I'm okay with the fix. Just don't worry about it. It's the, happening. You guys are getting them. The good doctor. This, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. Let's get, I just want to make sure we hit your TV show. I was just going to go back to the Celtics and the Lakers in those years in the 80s when they kept winning and then getting the number one pick. And the number two pick. How did that happen? Chris, how did that happen? <sighs> that Red Auerbach kept on getting it. That, he got to hang on to Larry Bird's rights for more for than a all, year. For over a year, yeah. He drafted Larry Bird the year before. Bird decided to come back to college, and then The Lakers had, to... had, had Jabbar, and then they get Magic. Yeah. And then they got James Worthy. Right? And then they got James Worthy, who I play golf with. He's hey, a great so guy. So you got Porzingis, and then you got Frank Nilakina. Before, before <laughs> Phil got out the door. Yeah, but we traded Porzingis and got the pick that we should have picked Dennis in the first Smith, place. Good, I know. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's being a Nick fan, ladies and gentlemen. The Mike Del Tufo Smoke Fest is the only hope. I'm in. Sort of, sort of like. I'm hoping. Remember that from uh, from Star, Star Wars. Star Wars. 
You're the last hope. You're the last hope. You're our only hope. (laughs) You play Dr. Aaron Glassman in The Good Doctor season two, uh, Mondays at 10 p.m. Eastern time, and then on Ballers as well. You're you're blowing up, sir. Things are going well for you. Um, I'm having a good time. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. As I asked you in uh, the television all the segment, if you're having a good time on The Good Doctor, what what do you like most about The Good Doctor that you're proud about the most of this program? Um, I like the collaboration that I have with uh, David Shore as the creator, and, and we get to, to, to get in there and, and grapple with what's the best way to tell the story and what, mm-hmm. where the story should go. So I, I love the, that collaboration. I, I love Freddie Highmore, the, you know, I call him the kid, the Brit who was, uh, plays Sean Murphy, who has autism and who my character has mentored, and he's a great partner to work with. And what I love most right now is that um, I have a new love interest on the show uh, who's very beautiful and very sexy, which never happens in my career. <laughs> Just so happens to be played by my wife, Sheila Kelly. <laughs> that is fantastic. So that's, uh, we kissed, I, I've kissed, I've had three kiss scenes in my entire career. Two of them have been lucky enough to be with women. Do I ask who the third one was? Yeah, my wife is the. Oh, oh no! I see what you're oh no! The uh, uh, the uh, yeah the third in in chronology is my wife, mm-hmm. uh, D. W. Moffat. Okay. The actor D. W. Moffat. And what and what uh, what film was this? What? It's a good question. It was directed by Claire Peplow and and uh, Bridget okay. Fonda was in it. And what's the Australian's name? Oh my God! There's many of them. Uh, Spartacus the and. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe was okay. in it when before anyone knew. All right. Much about him. And then uh, Ballers, uh, that that is just a, a, a great, just a blast. good old time. Ah, the just rock. a blast. Dwayne, right. Dwayne is a, a DJ, as we call him. is a great guy. Do really you call gem. him DJ? I don't, I just, How do you, no. what do you call him? I, yo. Yo? Yo. <laughs> no, I okay. just, uh, I just, I, I think I call him Dwayne. But he's, uh, he's a really, really genuinely great guy. And Fawn comes to play, very busy guy. And Rob Corddry, who I get to work oh, with. I love him, And too. my buddy Steve Weber plays my brother now. That's right. And we've never gotten to work together, and we're really good friends, and that's a blast. So. And then good. last one for you. Everybody seems to be remaking stuff, rebooting stuff. Is there any possibility of getting the West Wing back together, just seeing what you guys are all well, up to I these was, days? Well, I, I was misquoted, and, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, the story got out. Deadline reported that Richard Schiff says the talks are on. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't exactly what happened. I was asked... Uh, about, uh, you know, would I like to see one? And the answer was yes, and, and I have a great idea. And then after talking about it for 10 minutes in this interview, I then said it most likely will never happen. Mm-hmm. They left that part out. It most likely will never happen. Um, but I, I don't do, want to hear that. I don't uh, want to hear that. Yeah. Why well, wouldn't it ever happen? Because everybody's too busy or something? Well, first of all, I think, yeah, I think Aaron's really busy. He's about to win a Tony, and he's probably wants another Oscar. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, we're all uh, busy and booked. Um, doesn't mean there can't be a, a, a new version of it. So what's your idea? Uh, it's to get out of the white, not be in the White House and to get to the grassroots and to uh, focus on, on where democracy really happens um, and start there again. You know, go back to that, to that, which is what I think we should do in real life is right. to go back to the very basic roots of, of where democracy begins and make sure on the local level we elect the right people so that... Uh, the gerrymandering and the voter suppression and all that other stuff doesn't happen. Um, and, uh, and my particular specific idea I won't get into, but it is great. Okay. Um, and maybe it'll come in some other form. Well, you know? you're, you've got this idea, and so you'd be in. Uh, I believe Rob Lowe is just booked for our first week of April. One by one, let me Rob let me isn't in my idea. He's not in your idea? No. <laughs> Okay, so news, let's yeah. just not bring that up when Rob comes in on the oh, second. Of, yeah, you can uh, bring it up. He can handle it. He's okay. a good guy. Okay. All right. So <laughs> Tell him I, I said just, hi. I was going to do I was going to do like one by one. I could get it all together just in the same way that I'm going to take one for the team to get Dolan out of town. First uh, week of uh, well, July. well, let's see what happens. I'd, I'd, go, I'd go beyond um, Rob, and if he's in, we'll talk about it. Good to see you, Richard Schiff. <laughs> good doctor on ABC, Mondays at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Let's chat as the baseball season matriculates. I'd, I'd love to. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.